welcome, welcome, welcome. and welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Wine, Wine, and Once, the Once Upon a Time podcast. I'm Lo. And I'm Dee, and welcome to a bad time. Such a bad time. Oh, it's terrible. So this is, as Lo mentioned, Wine, Wine, and Once, and what we do is we are going through and rewatching every single episode of Once Upon a Time, primarily so you don't have to, and also because we really love this show a lot. We love this show so much, and therefore we also hate this show so much. We see it for all that it is. For better or for worse. It is my most hated show. Mm -hmm. It is my favorite show. It is both. I, yes. We are both, in fact. Just like the themes we learned (laughs) in the beginning of season two, we are both. We are both. I love this show. We have been watching for... Ten years. Over ten Mm -hmm. years, which Mm -hmm. is disgusting. Hate that for us. But this time we are watching a little bit differently. We've we've seen the show many, many, many times. But this time we're keeping track of a few things. We are trying to create a full, conclusive family tree, which is more difficult than you would think. It's such. It's so wide. The family (laughs) tree is so wide. It just keeps going, and all paths lead to Rumpelstiltskin, which is distressing. (laughs) You know where it's really oh, disgusting, no. though, that all paths lead That's to true. That's skin. even worse. Mm. Mm. Like, the fuck fern. Too many lines on the family tree lead to Rumpelstiltskin. But even more. But way too many lines <laughs> oh, it's on bad. the fuck fern lead to Rumpelstiltskin. Yes, and so that's the other thing we're looking at is the fuck fern or relationships um, confirmed ishness happening. Imagined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Things that maybe we're speculating that aren't really there, but we like to think that there's something happening. We do have rules for that. We do. There is a certain threshold that couples need to meet before we will put them on. Three awkward, not awkward moments, three moments with weird tension. Exactly. If there are three or... Three moments. Precisely. So we have the the two shrubberies. Uh, Then I'm also looking at the magic bean count, which... Right now, it isn't a big deal. Will become one, I promise. I feel like I'm lying to everyone. It will become a very big deal. It is absolutely going to become such a huge deal, and it will enrage me. Yeah. So much. Oh, it's bad. It's awful. And similarly, uh, the whole town curse count, there's a lot of them. A lot of times of a final curse being mentioned, I'm tracking all of them to see how many final curses we have. Uh, and and let, finally, the oh, most enraging. This is why I get gray hairs. I am calculating how often Emma's superpower works, or more appropriately, does not work. It never works. Her, yeah, her average is really poor. <laughs> it's distressing. It, it, and, mm. it, it just upsets me. And we'll, I mean, just we'll wait. Revisit this every week, and I know I need to stop just harping but on it, no. but all we had to do was change the wording up from superpower, and no. we would have been fine. We're going to mention this okay. at least a dozen more times, because it continues to make oh, me that's... angry. It's so generous of you to say it's only going to be a dozen. Well, okay, I'm thinking, like, at least twice a season. No, that's not, we've already said it three times, we're on, what, episode 11? You're right. You're right. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's at least, it's at least 24 more times. Jesus Christ. Uh, how's it going? <laughs> Moving away from that upsetting oh, you know. topic. Oh, you know, the world is the, the world. world is the world. <laughs> the world is happening. So, and I'm sure everyone listening knows the world is the world is the world. So, uh-huh. you know, it's all good, I guess. <laughs> is it's it? As good as... No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. We're lying to ourselves, but, you know, it's Wednesday. It is We've Wednesday. wine. Are we both drinking wine? We are both oh, drinking wine. Shit. Look at us. Look at us bringing the wine back into wine, wine, and once. I'm proud of us. I mean, really, the 18 year olds would be so proud. <laughs> God. Oh, I, feel I like... mean, the 21 year olds. Yeah, uh-huh, are definitely uh-huh. 21. Oh, yeah. Uh, although, I, that, you said 18 year old makes me think I was looking at the analytics of our listeners, which I really feel like I need to make this statement. We have almost 200 listens, which. Considering we don't, you've seen our social media, we don't market. We're not doing shit. I spend 38 seconds on those social posts every day. And, and they make me laugh every time. <laughs> the, the important thing is we are our own target audience and we make it, yeah. we make ourselves laugh. And apparently 200 other of you? Like, I mean, we 
you know, that's a little generous, but... Well, I mean, 200 people have... 200 listens, I should say. You keep say. turning... You keep tuning yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. You keep coming back. You, keep... you think we're funny, I guess? Thank you. I needed I'm that. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Uh, and... I mean... I know we said it at the beginning, but we're so happy you're we here. We are. We are. And um, I'm sure a lot of you figured this out, but we are now not only on Spotify, but on Apple Podcasts and also YouTube. So if you don't have Spotify and if you're listening don't to this, have... you have found us somehow, but tell somehow. your friends. So, tell your friends. If they don't have an iPhone, they can find us on Spotify. If they don't have mm -hmm. an Android, they can find us on Apple Podcasts. It's very weird. It, exactly. It, we're... There's a way to find us. Very you, strange. You will, only, you will always find us. Absolutely not. Don't find us. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not. I don't want to be a charming. No, no. Oh, this is, it happened this week, so I'm angry about it. Um, I already told you earlier, Lo, but everyone needs to know this. I started reading a new book. Oh, yeah. Wanted to get into it. I, I usually read a lot. Haven't been lately. And I thought, oh, let's, let's give this new book a try. And about four pages in... I was getting really bothered because one of the characters seemed so familiar and I couldn't figure out why and I couldn't figure out if it was from another book. No, no. The villain goes by the title of the Dark One. Nope. So I had to Absolutely stop. Not. I had to stop reading immediately. It was Absolutely too much. not. It was too much. It was too much for me. Exit. Exit immediately. I had to. And it's the only thing that makes sense. It is. I, I just didn't want to read about the dark one before going to bed. I didn't know what that would do to my psyche as I tried to sleep. I've already had enough dreams about Rumpelstiltskin and Robert Carlyle. I don't need any aid in that. <laughs> I was gonna say, look, we were roommates in college. Oh, no. <laughs> we had really cute nicknames for each other. <laughs> oh, you're gonna bring that up now? It's really just reading myself for filth. Uh, oh, I, no, it's only reading you for filth. It, yeah. I mean, mine was very accurate, but... Yeah, um... Y yours reads yours for some. Yeah, so when we were roommates, I thought it'd be really great to put little signs above our doors. So above Lowe's... Above, above our beds. Above Lowe's, Lowe's bed, it said frigid bitch. Above mine, it said bestiality. <laughs> I feel it's really important to mention my favorite character is Mary Poppins, who was not touched by the show, thank God. And then... <laughs> I like I'm... Belle. I like Belle, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 I'm going to drink as I think about next week's episode. Come back next week with the episode to read Deeper Phil. Oh, no. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, I'm not going to be doing it, though. No, really, I have to read like, this. Oh, my God. This is going to be a change of pace because I will not be the one reading you for Phil. It will be yourself. No, I next week will just be me like dragging my own former opinions through the mud. It'll be I'm great. I'm looking forward to it so much. Oh, I'm dreading it. But I have a week to prepare. We don't have to deal with it for seven days. Uh, right. Because... And we're going to be here right now. Exactly. And uh, we are talking about episode 11, Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. A Sydney Glass episode, we, everyone. We the love it. Story. We, we, no, it's been a minute. Since, well, a whole episode since we got a backstory. So that's true for us. And listen, anytime we can get Giancarlo Esposito in here, he is such a fun, just Love it. character actor. Mm -hmm. I think he's so much, like, he's so enjoyable to watch. He that is. Even with the bonkers episode that we are about Ooh, to endure. Yeah. It's just fun. It's so fun. really fun. Like, he's a really good actor. He is solid. He sells us on the humanity mm -hmm. of the genie of Sidney Glass. It's great. He's super fun to watch. Absolutely. Like, I want to always make sure that we take the time mm -hmm. to recognize, especially the actors who take these insane really characters and they bonkers do great things plots. With right? Yes. There's no reason this character should be enjoyable at all, but he is. Right. You know, so I always think it's really important that we take the time to recognize when the when things go well, mm -hmm. or when things are extra fun. Right. And yeah, we're mean to the show a lot, but we do love it. We really do. I really love this show. I will, like, it is really important to note that when we get together, we elect 
to watch the yes. show for fun. We are watching simultaneously. I think we're in like season four on our own. We just are. Just for fun. Yeah. Because it's an amazing, fun time. It is. The whole way through. It's great. As much as we rag on the little bits of it and the details and the insanity mm-hmm. of the plot. Oh, yeah. It's just a fun time. It is. All the way through. So I do want to take the time when, like, someone like Giancarlo Esposito is, like, super amazing. Yes. And doing good work with an, an okay. Yeah. I think it's a pretty okay episode, but not It's great. nothing special. It's not it's super fine. special. Yeah. It's, like, it's a, it's a good solid episode. It I is. don't have much to say on the construction or the writing or anything so that's something i mean it's it's a solid episode and then like between him and lana paria like i feel like we just end up with this very fun dynamic that's interesting to watch like it's an interesting episode because of who is in it not Mm -hmm. because of what was written no i definitely agree absolutely what are you Go oh. ahead and take us into the Disney Plus oh, summary, which you is know how much I love. You know how much I love a Disney Plus <laughs> summary moment. Yeah. Oh boy. So the summary reads, Sydney asks Emma for help uncovering evidence that could expose Regina's corrupt ways. Semicolon. David and Mary Margaret continue to meet secretly. Semicolon. King Leopold. Parentheses. Richard Schiff is granted three wishes. Sure. I mean, now I... <laughs> Want to be clear, Richard Chip. Um, I don't know of anything else he's done off the top of my head, but his IMDb is just like it's a lot. There's many, many things. So many things you probably know him from something. He's he's just one of those faces that you know because you've seen him somewhere. Yep, absolutely. He's been on everything. He's been in movies. He's been on TV shows. But it is weird that he's called out in, the... in parentheses mm-hmm. when we're not calling out the main character of the episode, the focus of the episode. Right? Who's also, he's recurring, but he's not, I don't think he's like full cast. I don't think he's. Right. I don't think he's like credited as full cast. Maybe he was for a season. That's true. What do I, I know? know? We didn't look it up. <laughs> don't come to us for that kind of stuff. We don't do details. No, no, no. There's no, you know, research in this. No, no, no quality assurance. We're just here. Yes. I only looked up his IMD, Richard Schiff's IMDb, because I was like, why do I know him? That's a good reason to look him up. And it was probably NCIS, let's be clear. That I feel like it, if you're in the industry long enough, you will find yourself on NCIS. I feel like it's that like was just in order. Yeah, like those two, you will be on one of them. You're on one of them. I'm pretty sure he was on both. Like I don't. That feels right. I went through an NCIS phase back in like high school. I love it. You know, living the living the dream. Woohoo! I almost outed like my ship preferences for <laughs> NCIS. <laughs> And I'm just going to keep those, like, quietly to myself. That's right. You tuck those away. You you hide your shame. <laughs> you hide your high school shame. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, do you want to take a, a nice sip of wine before you jump in? You do this every week I read the summary, and every week I think you're about to ask me, do you want to take us in? And I'm ready to say <laughs> no. <laughs> every week. That's fair. Are, are, are you ready to take us into this? No, I'm going to take okay. a nice sip of my wine. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right. So we are going into season one, episode 11, Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. And I do like the title of this episode because this is an excellent pun. It is. For so many reasons. Number one of which, obviously, Regina, poison apple. Apples come from trees. Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. Great. But also, Fruit of the Poisonous Tree is a legal term. For that, I actually did illegally, not know that. Yeah, it's for illegally gotten evidence. 
Oh shit. Which is something that occurs okay. in this episode. So All right. like this credit is actually to this like fucking All right. Credit where credit is due. That that's good. Yeah, isn't that really like, I really so, like that. Right. So if you um like in police work, if you execute a search and you don't have a warrant or it's done through illegal means, anything that you gain from mm-hmm. that search a lot of the times can get thrown out because like unless there's probable cause things sure, like that sure. but but if you're just on a vendetta and you search something to search something no. without permission huh. it's fruit of the poisonous tree and cannot be admitted into court okay so now i have a question did you learn that in your law and order phase <laughs> i'm not gonna say i didn't you know that's fair Okay, to be fair, I had a very short Law and Order phase, and it was criminal intentable. Oh, oh. <laughs> Most people do like SVU. <laughs> I mean, and don't get me wrong, SVU is on, and I've got nothing to watch. Sure. I'm watching SVU. Oh, absolutely. But no, like there was a hot moment in in high school that was NCIS and criminal intent. It's wow, fine. I love it. Uh, I'm boned. I went through a procedure. Oh, that phase. was a good one. Anyway, we digress. Leaving behind my <laughs> high school media preferences. <laughs> Fruit of the poisonous tree. We start in Storybrooke. Emmett and Henry are meeting at his castle playground. Uh-huh. Henry is really frantic. He rides straight by Emma. It's actually quite funny. It's great. She's like, hey, and he's just, no. <laughs> Absolutely not wobbles one by. So good. He's worried that the storm from last episode has washed away his book mm. because he hid the book at the playground. Naturally. Emma, of course, is like, you didn't just, you know, hide it under a mattress. And she's, I, he's like, the evil queen would have searched there immediately. That's the first place she'd look. She's like, okay, then why didn't you give it to me? Well, that's the second <laughs> place you didn't look. The sass that this 10-year-old has. Truly. Chef's kiss. Truly wonderful. So, of course, he hit it there. He hit it at well, the Well, naturally. That, I, okay, I do have a moment. I need a moment with this. Please. He says, Regina does not know about this place. This is a full-blown <laughs> playground public. on a bluff in Storybrooke. It's a public location. It's not even in the forest no. or, like, hidden. It is on a cliff. You can see the water. Right? Like... I mean, like, there is no sheltering this. No. No, it is. They are out in the open. They are not hiding. It is a playground. Like, I can understand if it was, you know, like a rock configuration and he was like, I don't know, it looks like a castle. This is the castle. No, it is a wooden play structure with, like, one of those towers. Exactly. There is no point. But, of course, it is important to recognize that as a Regina... <laughs> A politist Listen. podcast. This playground has been TV destroyed. Yeah. It's still standing because we as the viewers need to know where it is and like what we're looking at. Yep. But it's been truly roughed up by the storm. Really not safe for any children. Exactly. So they're there. Regina shows up. Because <laughs> I thought she didn't know friend. about it. Of course not. I don't know. She followed Henry, I guess, like in her car, just like God. driving five miles an hour behind her on his bike. God. I don't know. I love that for her. It's like, it's goals. Mm-hmm. It's really hot, but you know. Regina can do no wrong for someone that does a lot of wrong. Correct. So she arrives, she is looking for Henry, and she and Emma immediately get into a spat where. Regina accuses Emma of not thinking of Henry's safety and letting emotion cloud her judgment. And Emma's like, well, that's all you do. It's great. She has a really funny line where Regina looks at Emma and is like, you let him play here? It's great. Truly. So, these women are not getting along. Emma later is shown at Granny's when Sydney Glass just like, oh my god, slides into the booth. And by slides, I mean sloshes. He sloshes into the booth yeah. because he's drunk. 
Do you think he's like in his contract? Really drunk. He says, I must have a glass in my hand every scene I'm being filmed. Because so far, that has been the case, I'm pretty sure. Almost every time. In he, most. Like, yeah. It's always that Granny's always at an inappropriate time to have a drink in his hand. Yeah, it's wonderful. Emma immediately says, like, do you want a side of bacon with that whiskey? <laughs> like, great time. Love so, it. So, he sloshes into the booth. Oh, my God. And reveals that he has been fired from the newspaper <laughs> and he's writing an expose. He's writing an expose on Regina. Of course he is. And that he's found out. You know, of course they have a little back and forth. But ends up, Sydney reveals that there is a large sum of money that has missing from the town budget. And Emma kind of just goes like, okay you're in the mayor's pocket i'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole right like i don't trust you we're just but at the very end of the meeting he holds out his business card and is like call me <laughs> why does Nema he take business it. cards i don't know because he's sydney glass that's fair and sydney glass has business cards i don't do we just still carry business cards. I don't know. These I things. have a whole box for my job. I've maybe given out ten because I don't want people to email me. Solid, <laughs> solid point. Good strategy. Thank you. After our encounter at Granny's, we flash over to the Enchanted Forest, where King Leopold is on a water's ledge. Edge. This is Snow White's dad, mm -hmm. and he finds a genie lamp. That Ooh. has washed up on shore. Fun for him. So he rubs it, and the genie of Agrabah is free. We know the genie of Agrabah. It's Sydney Glass. Oh boy. So there, the here genie we go. Immediately launches into the genie of it all. And mm -hmm. I will grant you three wishes. Here are all the rules. I can't make anybody fall in love with you. I can't make it bring anybody back from the dead. Yada, all yada, wishes yada. come with a price. Like, blah, blah, blah. Sure. And then he turns to the king and he's like, what do you want? And the king is like... He's so annoying. He's like, I'm the happiest fucking guy in the world. I hate this. <laughs> I hate people when you say, oh, how's it going? And they're like, great. Things are so... Like, or if you, what do you want for your birthday? Oh, I don't need anything. I'm happy. Shut the I, fuck up. Everyone I wants something. Be materialistic. Man. Damn it. I hate this man because all he says is like, well... I have everything in life I could possibly want. Gag. We know this not to be true. No. Oh, we'll get into but, this. We'll get into this. Right. Like, the episode proves him completely wrong anyway, but he's like, I have I have a, a wonderful daughter and a beautiful wife. Fine. I have everything in life I could want. Uh -huh. So, you know. It's fine. Let's just sit down. And they sit down and they have a lovely little chat mm. where the genie of Agrabah says, you know, that the one thing he wants is freedom. And they're talking about freedom and all of this. So Leopold eventually is like, I know what I'm going to wish for. This this frustrates me. Uh -huh. I'm not going to lie oh. to you. Oh. We start with wish one. I'm going to go through the wishes before I reveal what frustrates me about the uh -huh. wishes. But, wish one, frees the genie. Okay. Wish two, <laughs> give wish three <laughs> to the genie. So, I have a few uh, questions, concerns. Someone, someone clocked, someone did clock my own issues mm -hmm. with this. Because... He says, wish one free the genie. And then the genie says, well, there's two wishes still stored in the lamp. Are wishes stored in the lamp? <laughs> I was yes. under the impression that the genie was the one granting the wishes, no. not the lamp. It's the lamp. No, I, I don't accept that. I'm more disturbed that after he has freed the genie, he's able to just fucking ask for more shit. That would have made Aladdin a much easier film. Exactly. That is, I mean, that's my exact point. Are wishes stored in the lamp? 
Because if they are, Aladdin has a lot. It's so much easier. Uh, yeah. I just have questions. So. My favorite is after this whole, like, oh, you're free. I'll give you my third wish. The genie says, I've seen, a, I think it's like 2,001 wishes or 1,001. Some specific I'm number. Sure it's like a, I'm sure it's 1,001 because 1,001. Oh, one Jesus night. Christ. But he was like, and every single one I've seen go poorly. So I will never use this wish. First of all, right. you just got your freedom. Are you saying that was a poor choice? That's a weird way to say thanks. Because <laughs> he could make wish three, JK, you're no longer free if you don't fucking watch your mouth. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, continue. I'm just real spicy about these wishes. No, that's, that is an excellent point about the wishes. So, anyway, Ginny is free, but the king says, well, what would what are you going to do now with your freedom? And the genie says, well, now I'm going to look for the one thing that being a genie and granting all these wishes has prevented me from. I'm going to go look and find true love. He wants sex. Yeah. Genie horny. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh-huh. So King Leopold is gracious enough. <laughs> he's to like, like, no, he specifically says, well, maybe you'll find so in my kingdom. Where? Where is he going to find love in your kingdom, sir? There is one woman. You're married to her. No, there's two. One's your daughter. Jesus. <laughs> oh. you right. Good catch. Not a better We're option. We're using child snow. Oh, no. We're using Jennifer Goodwin. I'm just saying. Oh, so... no. Anyway. Leopold offers to bring the genie back to his kingdom and says, be... Come part of my court and maybe you'll find someone there. And, okay. of course, brings him back. They introduce him, the genie, to Snow, who is Jennifer Goodwin in this scene, which feels... The timeline in my brain is confused. I It is weird. It's... I odd i feel like in my head when i think about it when snow's dad dies she's little she is no and i don't but i don't Maybe. think that's right i do think i've said things that he Jennifer remarries Goodman shortly throughout. after his her mother dies like it's pretty shortly after so i do think because no you're right she is older because there's the episode after the father dies and they're embracing and it's so sad right that's like the pilot no. episode i think or like the second or like it's very early or yeah. something. No, and so like but it is weird because I feel like in my brain I want Snow to be looking younger. Mm -hmm. Only because for this timeline to make any amount of sense, she needs to be younger. Yeah. <laughs> because the genie of Agrabah is introduced she's he's introduced to snow white who is a nearly grown woman at this point i mean i guess maybe we can make the argument she's 16 is maybe as low as Yikes. i'm going to go yeah yeah i'll i'll give 16 yeah. jennifer goodwin i don't think at, even at that point could play 16 no but, but I'm willing I'm willing to I'm willing to suspend disbelief down to like 16. Yeah, I'll allow that. And then he's also of course introduced to the queen oh, of the enchanted forest. Her outfit. Regina, I all I can think of is Anna Karenina. <laughs> That's it. She's got the big puffy like mm -hmm. fur hat and a muff and a fur collar. She looks like her husband mysterious, like died from mysterious causes. Yeah, she looks like she's about to go put on a negligee and like a very sheer robe mm -hmm. with like feathers around the sleeves yep. and the rep and yep. the hem. Oh, absolutely. Oh no, detective! I don't know what happened to my husband. Exactly, which I mean is foreshadowing, I suppose. So I uh, yeah. <laughs> scene is it's very obvious Jeannie's super into Regina like from the moment yeah. he sees her 
Regina immediate is infatuation. In a very bright outfit from what we've seen Regina in, so she is in playing the long con game, oh. I guess. Anyway, over to Storybrooke. Henry's playground is being torn down. Oh, no. The castle, no. The castle, no. Because Regina has ordered it so. And he's really upset about this because, of course, he hit the book there. And he is worried that it has been lost now. Sure. Emma sees this. Finds out that he's upset, and she's really upset that, like, Regina's making unilateral decisions for Mm -hmm. the town. Or whatever. I don't know. I don't understand Emma. I am not an Emma apologist. No, no. (laughs) Personally. So, I don't know. She, I get, I, okay, to be fair, the foreshadowing from earlier where, you know, They were talking about emotion clouding judgment. Emma Mm -hmm. lets her emotion cloud her judgment. She's upset that Henry's upset. Sure. So she calls Sydney Glass. Well, why not? And is like, would you like to make an alliance with me? Oh, no. And the answer is yeah. Yeah, he would. Absolutely, yeah. Meanwhile, Mary Margaret and David are having an adulterous picnic in the woods. Nothing of note happens. They're just... And you yet, know, kissing in the woods. This is the that is the only snowing whatever their ship name scene is in this whole episode. Why is it in the Disney Plus summary as a notable point of plot? That's all. I, I'm just I mean, upset. I I guess it's notable that they've started an affair. I thought the making out last episode kind of solidified that. Well, you know, I don't know. This is like Really, really? Like, okay, now we're really sneaking around and definitely not heroes? Yeah. I'm gonna drink. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. Sydney and Emma meet in a sketchy tunnel. I don't know where this storm drain tunnel is, but they meet in a sketchy tunnel. I'm sorry, did you say Sydney? I thought it was Inspector Gadget. (laughs) It really is Inspector Gadget. Do-do-do-do-do-do! Inspector Gadget. So, Emma and Inspector Gadget (laughs) meet in the sketchy tunnel, where Inspector Gadget over there reveals that $50,000 is missing from the town budget. Oh, no. And not only that, Regina is responsible for the $50,000 going missing. That checks out. At first, Regina, or Emma, at first, (laughs) Emma isn't impressed she's like okay like understandably no offense fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money but to a town fifty thousand dollars is not a lot of money so she's like eh that's all you got but he eventually manages to convince her that they need to show regina's true self this is terrible they have to show her for who she is sure emma asks well, how did you end up in Regina's pocket? <laughs> like, why were you her right-hand man for so long? And he says, I used to think she was a different person. Oh, I thought it's because Which, she probably promised him sex. One in the same. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are one in the same. That's fair. Because we flash on over to the Enchanted Forest. Now... Where we are at the king's birthday, where he is giving a really weird and awkward speech <laughs> about this scene. how wonderful and beautiful this woman in front of him is. Regina, and how I perfect assume she is his oh, wife. No, I not assume. His wife. Oh God! Oh, no. oh, good, 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 good. No, no, it's his daughter. Mm. He's talking about his daughter. It, his it, daughter is she Snow the fairest so... of them all? She's the fairest of him, them all, and she is so beautiful and wonderful and perfect, and she reminds him so much of his dead wife, mm. her mother. Cute. It's not creepy at all. Mm-mm. So, Regina, I don't entirely know what's going on in her brain. I never do. I don't do. know if she's 
I don't know if she's genuinely upset at this, which to be fair, this whole speech as a wife, even if you're not totally into your husband, just very upsetting. Yeah. It's not great. Like on his birthday, he doesn't even mention his wife, doesn't mention, you know, like I'm sad you're mother is dead but i'm so glad that you have a stepmom and she's part of the family nope not a nope your dead mom was great and you remind me of her and, and you're so beautiful i love two people i love you and your dead mom and i think that's everyone who wants cake <laughs> exactly so i there's part of me that i i would love at one point to just ask lana priya what she's at and yes. what she was playing like was she playing this as it was genuinely hurting her mm-hmm like, was it genuinely hurting Regina to hear these things? Or, or she just, oh. Hmm. Or was she a super sneaky, beautiful manipulator who knew that Sydney, well, not Sydney, Jeannie, but I'm going to call him Sydney yeah, entertainingly because he doesn't get a real name. No. She knows that Jeannie is watching her from across the room. She so. assumes he'll be looking at her. And I love that energy. I would love that. She too. has like main either. character energy. That is the assumption that someone is looking at me and is seeing this happen. Yeah. <laughs> and she's not wrong. No. So she gets upset, whether feigned or real, she's upset. And she leaves the ballroom. The genie follows her out. They have this heart to heart where he hands her a mirror and says, sees yourself. As I see you. No. You are the fairest of them all. Huh. I, I sure. really quick do want to point out her attire, which is not very Regina-esque, which I get it. She's not evil queen. But perhaps King Leopold would love her more if he let her tits come out to play. Just I saying. I it's a wrong assumption. <laughs> Just food for thought. Continue. I don't know where <laughs> to go from <laughs> But to be fair, I... Fully agree with you, number one. Number two, I was just filled with an incandescent rage for King Leopold. <laughs> I hate that. Maybe As we'll we talk about it later, we'll don't worry. Discuss later. <laughs> I'm sure you're all thinking, why? Why is this guy so hateable? He is. We will turn you to the dark side. The correct side, actually. Regina's done nothing wrong in her life ever, and I do mean when she murdered all of those villagers. <laughs> she was, you know what? I think she was in the right there. I can see it. It's fine. Everything she's done has been justified. <laughs> I see nothing wrong. I nope. don't. I am not a fan because she got a redemption arc. I am a fan because she didn't need a redemption. Everything she's ever done. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Don't it worry is. about it, guys. To be to be clear. We don't condone murder. No, no. We would like to say publicly here and now we do not condone murder anyway. As you were. Anyway, anyway, back to apologizing for Regina. (laughs) (laughs) Back in Storybrooke, Emma and Sydney are combing through the town files and they realize that the records for three weeks ago, back when the land or the money transfer went through, are missing. All of those records are missing. They're arguing over, they're in Mary Margaret slash uh, Emma's apartment, Mm -hmm. and they're arguing over the means for how they're going to proceed to try and procure these records that are missing. Right. Emma's like, I need to do things by the book. I'm the sheriff now. I have responsibilities. That means Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. don't have fun anymore forever. No. And of course. Sydney's over here like, bug the phone. Like, yeah, it'll be fine. I don't sometimes know. you have Tap to the wire. Sometimes you do shady shit for good purpose. And then oh. Mary Margaret's in the background, frantic and weird. <laughs> Real weird. About, yes. Yeah, sometimes you do bad things for good reasons. And it's okay because you did bad things, but they were for good reasons, which we know kind of. that is referring to the affair she is currently conducting. Uh huh. And show- we're supposed to. God. See as heroic and brave. We're going to dive into it later, but this show has a weird habit of trying to convince us that, like, bad people are constantly set up as good people, and it pisses me off. More on this later. 
More to come. More at six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus. It's your weekly story book news. <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, Snow or Mary Margaret gets real weird mm-hmm. about like encouraging them to do shady shit for good reason. God. Emma's already so, learned this lesson. We had another no, but uh, bold of you to assume that Emma can learn. <laughs> you know what? That's on me. You're right. <laughs> Sydney and Emma go to visit Regina's office and question her about the missing money. It goes about as well as you'd expect. If the records are missing, she must have checked them out. If they were from three weeks ago, she probably checked them out. And then they burned in the fire that got Emma elected sheriff. Uh-huh. So, See, my, my favorite part about this is Emma then gets really close, like she's going to rebuttal, and then just goes, okay. You know, I okay, <laughs> I will... I will admit it's a weird move until you find out I, what happened. No, and I, I know what I, but do better, Emma. You can do better than that. Yeah, be a little sneakier, but say something, revealed, not just okay. Yeah, fine. It's revealed that she does her weird little. I don't know. Look at my tits. <laughs> move. Which what I don't tits? Know. So, they're not even there physically, <laughs> um, let alone emotionally. Sorry. Jennifer Morrison, you're be- you're a beautiful. You lady. are, you are. This is no offense to you. It's not fair to put you in a scene with Lana Perea. It's no. just not. Anyway, mm-hmm. she does her little weird leany thing. They walk out, and it's revealed at the end that, at the end of the scene, that Emma planted a bug. Love it. She. Pl- so they are listening to everything that goes on in Regina's office now. Mm-hmm. Back in the Enchanted Forest again, the genie meets with King Leopold, who, good guy, good, Mr. Mr. Good Guy King Leopold, uh. the, the, the purest and wonderfullest dad of them all. Yep. Um, he's, Love him. He's such a good guy. Such a good guy. He's been reading his wife's diary. Jesus Christ. Such a good guy. Such a good guy. He's been reading his wife's diary, and no. he has realized that she is in love with another. Who is this man? Who is this man? Of course, Sydney is, or the genie is sitting there going, he is me. <gasps> like, I'll kill him when I realizing him. it's him that Regina has written about. Um, I have so much to say about this, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off. And just push forward Uh to the point where King Leopold is upset that he has been betrayed by his wife. Well, sure. Who has not acted on any of these feelings. I mean. And asks the genie to find out who this mysterious man is. Mm. And Mm. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to say anything. Proud of you. But I need you all to know. That it is taking every inch of my self-control not mm-hmm. to go on a rant right now. I'm very proud of you, personally. I'm in pain. That's I'm fair. in pain. It's taking me so much not to yell at this man. That's fair. But I'm not going to. I'm calm. I'm cool. I'm Are collected. You? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Proceed. Anyway. He asked Janie to find the man. It's the man who gave her the mirror, which we Uh, all know to be Sydney slash the genie mm -hmm. because he gave her the mirror in the scene before. Yep, yep. It's a really standout guy. Don't worry about it. So good. Back to Storybrooke. And Sydney and Emma are going to try and stake out this shady meeting that they've overheard is going to take place between Regina and someone in the forest. Oh, boy. Never a good sign. So they're driving, they're driving, they're driving, and the brakes fail on Emma's bug. I feel like as Emma, I would be trying and looking into, are there any, like, used car lots in Storybrooke? I feel like her car has failed a couple of times now, and if my car failed that many times, I'd be like, okay, right? it's time to get something new. Yeah, truly, and it goes through even more shit as the series goes on. Right. Like, 
I I will give maybe some passes after the curse is lifted. But right now, when you're not technically believing in a curse, and your car's brakes have an engine have stalled mm-hmm. out so spectacularly, mm-hmm. like a that's, couple of different times, that's not I would good. be like, okay, it's time for me to find a new car. Yeah. It doesn't have to be brand new, but I need a new I mean, this car. car is how old? She had it since... It was used in Tallahassee, so it's not a new car. So it's way older than Henry. Oh, God. Yeah? How is that know. car still running? Uh, good car? Maybe? I don't know. Mm. What's the life on a, on a Volkswagen? Can't be that good. I don't know. Anyway... There, the brakes on the bug fail, and they kind of crash. It's they're both safe, so Sydney and Emma are safe. Emma is starting to get mad when Sydney reveals that the brake lines on the bug have been cut. There it is. Once he's revealed that, Mister Gold appears Why? from the mist. Why is I this man know. always in the woods? Why? Why? I, does he live there? I feel he like might. he lives there. I feel like he might. He's always in the woods. Always. He's always, always in the woods. Oh. It's upsetting. Mr. Gold Slender Man. Yes. Great. Awesome. Yep. Can confirm. Okay. Awesome. All right. Head cannon accepted. Mr. Gold <laughs> Slender Man now. Love it. Anyway, he appears at the top of a hill. Or a knoll, if you will. Oh. And tells Sydney and Emma that Regina was meeting with him because she was buying the land that they were currently standing on. Mm-hmm. Sure. So they're like, that's shady as hell. Love it. And now Emma's pissed because her brakes have been cut. So they go and they just break into <laughs> Regina's office. <laughs> what happens is she's now woman of the law or what has a job as an officer and has to follow rules. She has responsibilities oh, now. Yeah, not anymore. Nope. She's gonna just throw a rock through a window God. and break her way in with the caveat that well, it's gonna take her two minutes to get the alert and then she has one minute to put on her coat and shoes and then like two to three to like get there. Get here. So she's like, we got about six mm-hmm. minutes. 45 seconds later. (laughs) Anyway, they break into her office and they find documentation that seems to prove that Regina has bought this land for personal use. Mm -hmm. She seems to have bought this land from gold and it seems like there is some sort of blueprint with it. So... They, that's all they manage to get when Regina shows up. Mm-hmm. And Emma says that, well, she was on a, she was just patrolling, doing her job as Regina asked her to do earlier in the episode when she noticed some teens break in. Well, of course, the teens. And of course, Regina looks at Sydney and is like, well, then why is Sydney here? <laughs> And Good question. Apparently, Sid- apparently, Sydney was out on a walk and is a witness. Sydney is not a good improviser. He does not know what to say. No. So no, he does not. When Regina is like, "Well, what did you see?" He's like, "I saw some teens out on a walk." Yep. And then they, and then Emma has to step in and be like, "There was a rock." Yeah. It's not great. So. No, he's not he's not an improviser at heart, our Mr. Sydney Glass. Anyway, Regina is suspicious, but then Emma is like, "Well, if you want me to find anything that they've taken, like or if anything's been stolen from your office, I can, but that will mean doing a thorough sweep of your office." <laughs> nope. Get the fuck and out. And like, "Absolutely not. Fuck you. Get out." I don't blame her. So, they leave. In the Enchanted Forest, we are back in that courtyard with the apple tree where Regina was introduced to Sydney, but it's just the genie there. 
and he meets up with Regina's father, Henry. Well, sure. Henry reveals that Regina has been locked in her room by palace guards. Great guy, that Leopold. And oh. that, um, I mean, maybe it's a Regina play, ploy. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I'm giving a lot of credit here to the writers, and maybe Regina plotted it and put the guards on her own room. That but, No, that's true. That seems, I, um, oh. given what we know about Leopold, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't trust it given what we just saw of Leopold. Right. But that's what I would like to believe they were going for. Yeah. Anyway, guards have been posted outside of Regina's room. She is not allowed out of her chambers, and he, her father is not allowed in because they know he would die for her. So Fair. he hands Sydney this box that he is carrying and says, please take it to my daughter. It is super vital that it gets to her, and I can't get in, but you have the king's ear. You are trusted. You sure. can take it to her. And of course, because the genie is in love mm. with Regina, he takes it to her. Immediately. In her chambers. Yeah. And in her chambers, it is revealed that she has brought into this palace. Originally, I thought it was two poisonous no. snakes. No, it's not. It's one. It's one poisonous snake with two heads. No tail. No tail. There is a, a head on both ends. We paused. We we watched this episode, set, like, this part of this episode. Yep. More than once to confirm. It is one snake with two heads. Yeah. One on each it's end. It's horrible. It's awful. Truly a terrible Agrabian viper of some sort. Hate it. Jeannie's very familiar. He knows that this snake, whatever it may be, well, I'm sure they name it. I wasn't paying attention. I was too anyway, disturbed. I was too disturbed by the fact that it is one snake with two heads. Yeah. So he knows that this bite will kill whoever it bites in a single bite and there is no hope. Like, oh, well, you're dead if you get bitten by this snake. Good to know. And so Regina says, well, I'm so unhappy and I will never be free. I... In a gilded cage. <laughs> lucky bird. I am a lucky bird inside a gilded cage. God. It's fine. It's the Aladdin show from Disney's California Adventure. May it rest in peace. Oh, I miss it. I miss it so much. Pour one out for Hyperion. Pour a little out for the Hyperion Theater. <laughs> Aladdin show. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Anyway. Regina's unhappy and so she reveals that she has brought this box of one snake to her <laughs> box because of she one is snake. <laughs> I was gonna say box of snakes but it's one snake yeah box so it's of... a box of snake it is a box I of guess. snake and she is going to go ahead and, and she's gonna let the snake bite her she's sure. gonna try to kill herself and of course the genie steps in and says, no, there's another way that we can be together. We should kill the king. Wow. And he volunteers to do the murder instead of her so that they can be together. Well, good. Good for him. I like that she keeps her hand, like, in the box for half of this and is not bitten by the snakes. It's a nice little point. <laughs> Back in Storybook, Henry sits at Granny's. He's trying to write down everything he remembers from his book when August sits down next to him. <laughs> Love ominous August. Oh, we love we love a mysterious man that no one knows who it is. Exactly. It's so, great. August tries to talk to Henry about the book, but Henry is immediately suspicious, as well he should be. Good on him. Mm -hmm. So Henry danger. questions August back about his reason for being in Storybook, and like originally August had said, like, "What are you writing about?" And Henry's like, "Stuff." Yeah. And then Henry's like, well, why are you in Storybook? What are you trying to find? And he goes, stuff. <laughs> so, so good. So good. So good. Eventually, August leaves. He wishes Henry good luck on his stories. And it's just like, peace out. Yep. Sydney and Emma find out that Regina is planning on building something on the land she purchased. So Emma is upset 
because she has res she has resorted to Regina level nonsense. Yeah, she's a she's outside of the bounds of the law. Oh, won't be the last time. But Sydney encourages her to realize that they just need to show the people who Regina is. She doesn't right. need to serve jail time. She doesn't need like they don't need to submit the fruit of the poisonous tree to court. No. Haha. -ha. Nope. They just need people to see her for who she truly is and that she's, you know, bad. So Fair. Also, then he's like, I need to show you something and shows Emma a bunch of pictures that Regina made him take from when he was trailing her. That's inappropriate. Like pictures of her and Emma or of Henry and Emma. So mm -mm. You know, Obviously, that riles up Emma, and they go to the city council meeting that is occurring, where they accuse Regina of building a second home using town funds. That's a cheap home. Of... $50,000 yeah. is a cheap-ass home. Just saying. I wish. God. Good lord. Good lord, I wish. Regina is like, oh, well, that's not right. No. Because I was just planning on building a new castle playground for all of the children of Storybrooke, including my son, to play safely. She has a whole slideshow and everything. It's very, very cute for her. It is. And Emma looks like a fool. It's yep. great. Mm -hmm. Love it. We flash over to the Enchanted Forest where the genie is in King Leopold's room. He opens the box, points the snakes towards mm. the victim because everybody knows that's how snakes work. It's true. And <laughs> obviously, then the U-shaped snake slithers and slinks up the bed and bites Leopold on both sides of his neck. It's upsetting. I don't uh, yeah. like it. It's not good. And as Leopold is dying, the genie reveals that he is the man that Regina is in love with. And mm -hmm. Leopold says that the genie was right about all wishes coming with a price and a consequence, and he never should have made a wish. My favorite is the genie keeps saying, forgive me, he's not gonna, dude, he's dying. Right, like, he's gonna die, and then you can't be forgiven anymore, and that's how murder works. Yep. So, anyway, it's a short little scene. We go back to Storybrooke, where Gold, outside the town council meeting, is congratulating Emma for being brave, but also says, you need a strong ally. If you're going to go up against the mayor. And Emma assumes that, like, he means him. Oh, sure. And, is trying, and so she's like, no. Absolutely not. Not today, sir. Turns him down. Then Regina comes over and Emma accuses Regina of cutting her brakes. But Regina is like, I don't know anything about that. Fair. And also, after the stunt you just pulled, like, accusing me of all these hideous crimes that I am not guilty of. There is yeah. not a jury or court or judge in the world that would turn me down if I requested a restraining order. You're going to stay away from Henry. You're not going to have contact with him. Or I will mm -hmm. go and get a restraining order. Fair. Until I say so, you cannot have contact. This should have happened 11 episodes ago. Correct. So, Insane. obviously, even though Emma has lost the high ground and you know is in a bad low place or whatever she immediately breaks this rule <laughs> and goes to the playground that regina has just built overnight apparently yeah sure it talks to henry over the walkie talkies and kind of explains that like nope they can't see each other you know, she is she is she does admit that she messed up and i do appreciate right. that but she's like yeah i fucked up kid like yeah like i i made a mistake and we can't see each other for a while because of it. And that's fine. So she says, we can't see each other, but I will keep looking for that book. And then, of course, it is revealed that the book is with someone else. Hmm. Who? The book has been picked up by Ominous August. Oh, I love an Ominous August. We don't know what he wants. He's just kind of looking at it. Hmm. How ominous. Then we flash over to Granny's where... Sydney and Emma sit down and are drowning their woes. But Sydney says, well, the one good thing that came from all of this is you now have an ally in me. And they cheers over uh -huh. it. 
over to the enchanted forest and the genie tell, goes to Regina's chambers to say, the king's dead, we can be together now. Like, everything's Yay. great. And Regina immediately says, well, the guards know that you killed the king. Sure. Like the snake was and... from Agrabah or something. Oh my gosh. Weird. Funny how that works. And he says they can never be together. Also fair. Mm-hmm. She has arranged for safe passage for him. Oh, that's There's a nice. boat ready to take him out of the kingdom and away from because if he stays, he will be arrested and executed for the murder of the king. Uh-huh. The genie realizes, oh, I've been set up. But it's like, even then he's like, she set me up, but I still love her. Yeah, no, he's like, I, you set me up. I do love you, though. And she's like, no, we're never going to be Stop. together. It's no longer I don't cute. Want... <laughs> Great, you're gross. I used you. But I am nice enough to let you go. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And be alive, if you would like. But, of course, the genie has that final wish from Leopold that he's never used Jeez. before. So, he wishes that he will never be away from Regina and he will always be by her side. She looks terrified at this wish. Like, oh, what is this bitch doing? I don't want to be stuck with him. It's my favorite little detail. The look on Regina's face is just pure terror at the idea of having to be with this man for the rest of her life. Which... Fair, but yeah. it works out in her favor because, obviously, as we have learned time and time again, all magic, all wishes come mm. with a price, and it's a rabbit's foot, monkey paw situation. It's a monkey paw situation, not a rabbit's foot situation. <laughs> I know which animal's foot we are taking. So, his wish sucks him into the mirror that mm. he gave Regina. He is now the magic mirror that we know from the oh, snow, all of the good. Snow White tale. And Regina grins and says, now we'll never be apart. You got your wish. Yay. He'll be with her forever. Forever. Because now he has to serve her in the mirror. Finally, our very last scene, we turn back to Storybrooke, where we find out Sydney was working with Regina all along. What? Oh my god. He says he will give Regina any information that he finds. And then Regina puts her hand really awkwardly high on his thigh and mm. says, I don't know what I would do without you, See? Sydney. She's promised him sex. And that is the end of Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. Wow. Wow. So there's a lot to unpack there. There is a lot. I I will say it is at least an episode that carries weight for future episodes. We have set things yeah. up. We have established some things. It's not absolutely a, a like a throwaway, like some of them have been. No, absolutely not. Wow, it's a lot to nitpick there, and I could nitpick all day. But there's a few things that made me big mad. I know that they've well, one thing that made me furiously angry, and I think we just need to sit with it for a minute jump on in let's talk about king leopold no <laughs> okay <laughs> moving on. on i'm too angry <laughs> <laughs> i'm furious at I, this man i'm furious i think the interesting thing i've already said this but the show has a really weird habit where they take characters that are doing bad things and say this is good this is a good I, character this is a good thing this person is doing i think what they needed to do and they didn't but they needed and what they wanted to do i don't know i wasn't in the writers room but should have been it feels like they really wanted to play with the idea of an unreliable narrator yes where in snow's mind her dad was beautiful and wonderful and perfect and then we see this and it's like um mm, reading your wife's diary mm. right except they never do that no. they never play with the idea that oh maybe you're like, Dad wasn't the man that you thought yeah. he was. Yeah, well, because we see that later with her perceptions of her mom. She's like, my mom was perfect, my mom was great. Your mom was a bitch. She got better, but she was not always a great person. And the other part of that is they never address that. No. So it's hard to say, like, oh, I see what you were going for on the unreliable narrator part mm -hmm. of it all. 
when I'm sorry. Number one, he reads his wife's diary. Yeah. Which is already not great. Unconscious. Like you should not do it. It is unconscionable. No, don't do that. That is a place where she would be writing her most private thoughts. It's not for anybody to read. Yeah. Stay out. Don't and she's not acting read. on it. It's... Which is pointed out. Yeah. It's pointed out by the genie that, like, surely she would never act on these impulses. It doesn't matter. She thought about it, and that's condemned. Like, and that's a betrayal. He not- uses some harsh language. He's literally like, my wife has betrayed me for thinking of another man when I know, number one, she was super young, and I'm old. Also, at my birthday when party, I, he, I didn't mention her at all and went on and on about my dead wife and my daughter. Right! Like, it's it was a po- he literally said i i think there's even a whole thing where he's like i'm not looking for love i just want my daughter to have a mom exactly his whole thing was snow needs a mother snow needs a mother you're a very like you're young enough you could you're be a her motherly type figure to her this will be perfect i'm gonna marry you and you'll be her mother now right so it upsets me it upsets me that we are told time and time again that this man was a good just ruler and a good father and maybe he was but like his actions here to regina it's to the point where i'm like yeah i don't know murder him yeah uh, he's useless he's terrible to her if he's willing to read her diary and then is like oh she's thinking about another person who made her feel good when i I am aware that I am not doing that job. Right? And she's even... In That's the, a betrayal to me. Correct. And I think she even admits, like, but I can never be with this person. Like, I can't leave. Like, she's admitting, I have feelings. I feel I can't do anything. Right. And again, it's not been acted on. No. Now, we, as an audience, can assume that Regina is playing a super long con game Oh, here. absolutely. But... And she know, But... The fact that she is confident enough in the fact that, oh, if I write in my diary, my husband's going to read it. Yeah. That's insane. Does he read it? Like, is this a normal thing? He's like, let's see what my wife's been up to. Let me dive into Clearly her personal enough, life. Clearly enough, it's part of her plan. God. That's I don't disgusting. Know. It, That's I just disgusting. I don't know. I just, I don't have time. I do not have time for King Leopold. It's so frustrating because it's, so similar to the David treatment. So we're getting like two True. episodes in a row of kind of just shitty behavior and told, but he's good. So true. And I don't like that. I don't like that even in, not a, Leopold aside, we have um, the Charmings doing a similar thing where it's, oh, you can do all this bad stuff for good reason. That's okay. That's okay. And, and that's and so okay. I don't know, there's a through line in this episode of, you can be shitty and be a good person. Right. It's just justification. And I don't like that. No, I don't, I don't like, I do not have time for King Leopold. No. I'm I glad don't have he's time dead. for a lot of, I, yes. Yes, get out of here. I don't want to see you again, and I know we're going to, but you're going to continue to be shitty, so I'm not but he sure also continues to be dead. He does die. Wonderful. Which is great. Right, he continues to be shitty, but he also continues to be dead. He is a permadeath because he's left <laughs> doing. I'm sh- oh, I wonder. No! Oh no! Together. For those of you who couldn't um clock the screaming and didn't know what we were talking about, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Dee just points out that Leopold is a permadeath. He doesn't come back. He also is another one who has slept with Regina. Jeez. One can assume. Mm, mm. I don't like that, but one can assume that they Yeah. So. God. Well, that's someone that we have spent too much time with already, but a character I wish we could spend more time with is Henry Sr. I want a spinoff of Henry Sr. I want to know his... A little bit. I want to know how his mind works. I want to know what he's thinking. Like this, I feel, he, this is a man that was married to Cora, so I just want to know what kind of person he is, because... I feel like I understand, except we didn't get the textual evidence for it. There's so much... Like, 
every in my in my head if i'm building out mm -hmm. if i'm building out this character from what we know of regina's upbringing of her right. childhood of what happens to her after she saves snow white all of that in my head what happens is obviously regina grows up right under the thumb of this very abusive mother oh yeah Oh yeah. Who's a bad mother? And don't get me wrong, I I love Cora. Do, like I love spending time with Cora. I think she's a wonderful character. We should, we deserved more time with yes. Cora. Yes, yes, we did. But she was a bad mom. She was a terrible mother. Oh, absolutely. And so I feel like he's a weak-willed man who loved his daughter. Yep. And was not able to stand up for her when it really counted when it was really important mm -hmm. so then when the mom disappears when the strong will disappears yeah. he ends up trying to make amends but his way of making amends is just by doing whatever yeah regina wants him to do oh absolutely it, it's the kind of the pushover parent of oh i want to make you happy will this thing make up for will this all make you happy and even to the point where when she's about to kill him, he's like, oh, well, I mean, is there another way? And she's like, nope. And he's like, okay, proceed. That's fine. Right. And, like, that, to me, is a super interesting character. Right? Like, and that would be really interesting to explore the idea of someone who is like, I feel super duper guilty, so I'm going to enable you on all of the things that I know are not great. Yep. But, hey, I already messed you up so bad that um, I guess I'm just along for I'm, the ride now. Because there are a few moments where he even says things like, you can find happiness somewhere else. Is there another way? Right, and tried. she's like, nope. And he's like, all right, I tried for 30 seconds. Good enough. He's he's more interesting to me. And the fact that she loved him enough, obviously that's what enacted the curse is her love for him. Right. But she's named her son after him. So this is right. clearly someone that she looks up to, respects, loves, all of those things. But he enables all these horrible actions alongside that. Yeah, he's more he's more interesting to me than Leopold is, only yeah. because I feel like his motivations like, how, are interesting. How did that letter home go for Regina? Dear father, please get this dangerous two-headed snake. It must be from Agrabah so I can frame this really nice genie that loves me. Also, I'm killing my husband. Thank you, Dad. Love you. Miss you. Or I'm going to kill myself. Because we don't know what she said. She could have manipulated him, I guess, too. True. She's very good at that. She's an adept manipulator. She is. We we will give her that. Wow. It's just, to me, like if we're comparing the two, if we're comparing Leopold to Henry, Henry is a way more interesting character. Only yeah. because of that dichotomy of you were a bad parent be first because you would let these you awful things happen by your wife's awful hand. Things. Yeah. And then now you're a bad parent because you've gone so far in the other direction. You're not pushing like you, he tries you're no longer point, parenting. Right. You're not trying to help your daughter heal he from tries. that. Like she, he's just letting her cope with her own trauma in terrible ways and not saying hey you are hurt but this is hey. shitty this is not good he tries but he doesn't not he, hard he i think it's a, it's one of the most consistent through lines too though of yeah him kind of like there's i think there are moments in those scene the rare scenes we get with cora and henry together yep we get like one or two it's so little but we get these moments of him, like, trying to say something and then just being, like, brushed off. Oh, well. Gosh. So, it like, but that's very interesting is that he's kind of replicated that exact dynamic mm -hmm. with his daughter now because he feels guilty about all of the pain he's... she's endured. And that's on generational so... trauma. Welcome to Encanto, my friend. <laughs> Again, we must insist you watch Encanto. <laughs> It is part of the lexicon. It hasn't been this episode, but it's part of the lexicon. Yep. Anyway. 
those were the two things I really needed to talk about. Do you have anything else above and beyond Leopold and Henry Sr.? Um, I mean, I'm still really mad about the fact that wishes are apparently housed in the lamp That's and not stupid. in the in the genie. That upsets me, but I don't need to rant about it. I'm just upset about it, and That's I'm going to hold that in my heart for the next week. We just will be upset until we die. That's just correct. a thing now. I do just have a note here in my in my notebook mm-hmm. that says, does Mr. Gold just live in the world? Yes, he does. Absolutely, he does. So. It's really upsetting. I have a note that just says, snow, good person, question mark, because it's a huge deal <laughs> in season two when she kills Cora that I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm a good... Because it's true. I'm a good person better than you. And... It's traumatizing that her heart would be blackened. Homegirl's over here having a full-on affair and justifying it. Full-blown affair where we know for a fact that this man has committed himself to trying with his wife. Uh Uh-huh. Now, she doesn't know that, so I will give her that. Sure. Like, I I will give her that maybe David Nolan is just infinitely more terrible. That's accurate, I think. And has not shared that he's, you know, promised his wife to make a go of it. Mm-hmm. But I, I can get him to get mad about them, and we will. Oh, Look. we have so much time. Just wait, guys. Just wait. I <sighs> do. I do need to take a moment. It's nothing to do with the episode, but we didn't mention it at, at the top of the oh, episode. Ooh, you made it this far. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Yep. Yeah. You're... Truly. Um, wow. I just want to take a moment to recognize we are on episode 11. Woo! We made it past the 10 episode yes. threshold. Yes, we did it. Which is super exciting. That is very exciting. We're so consistent. We are. We did it. Not really, but no. we've done 11 episodes, which is very exciting. It is. All right. It's housekeeping time. Housekeeping. Okay, well... On the family tree side of things, nothing has really occurred. We already knew that King Leopold yep. was Snow's dad. Um, we already knew sort of, we knew that he'd eventually marry right. Regina. Right. So nothing new to report there. Um But on the Fuckburn mm. I didn't even I Do we have to add Leopold I th- and Regina? I think <laughs> We have to add Leopold and Regina, and not only that, mm, I think we have to add, add Sydney he, and Regina. She, she touches his leg a lot and does, says a lot of suggestive things to I'm him. Gonna, I think okay. she has at least promised him sex, if not fulfilled yes, that I ask. We don't, I don't think we have anything confirmed. No. They're not going on, and it's confirmed, but they are absolutely going on as a, like... I'm stringing you along with the maybe. Right. So, I think that's a relationship bait. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Oof. Therefore. They I must mean, be added. Now, two, we are going to have to keep track of this. And I didn't think of it because, again, I am, I just was never a swan queen chipper. No. And I know there are so many people <gasps> We who have to add them to the fuck fern, don't we? I think we do. If we're going by our own rules, they are, at this point, they've I, had... I, they get, they do get the tension rule. Yeah. They get the tension mm. rule. So. All right. It's not my preference, but it's but there. out of respect for our listeners yes. and out of respect for our own rules, because we have agreed that if we're going to be pendantic, we need to be pendantic, pendantic with ourselves, too. Yep. So. So it's happening. I am going to go ahead and put them on with a weird mm. tension. That's fair. Because, yeah. No, I think that's correct. All right, so oh, man. Um, let's see. How's, how's the bean count looking? Bean count, we got nothing. Uh, town curses, right. we have the one. Now the lie, right. the superpower is where things get tricky in this episode. And <gasps> I, Lo and I went back and forth a few times trying to figure out kind of where we sat on this. Because there's a moment at the beginning where Sydney looks at him and says, Regina and I are done. Like, I, I'm i not working for her anymore. Right. And, and says the words worth like we are through we are done she and i are done 
And then later at the very end, he says, hey, at least you have an ally now. And we know for a fact he is not an ally. He is still working for Regina. None of those are true. I'm counting that as one instance, though. Emma doesn't clock it. She had two opportunities to clock the lie and did not either time. I think that's a, an incredibly fair way of handling it. I'm trying to be fair here. As much as I would love to say 10 fails out of 14 uses, I'm keeping it at 9 out of 13. Oh, a she, nice, Chris, wonderful, easy fraction. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So she is fail like, it has failed her 9 out of 13 times, succeeded 4 out of 13, so... Okay. So that's so not good. good. It's not looking, looking good, good, friends. Okay. So her fail rate currently sits at 64%. Nice. Great. And so cuz you said it was 9 out of 14. Well, right? I wanted to make it that. That's if I let it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 9 out of 13 is where we oh, officially excuse are. Excuse me. Oh no. That's even worse. Good. That's even worse. Tell me. I was being nice. Then, um, yeah. So if 9 out of 14 times she has failed, her fail rate sits at a solid 69%. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> God. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Truly horrible. Her success rate is about 31%. Love it for her. What a superpower. She is super. She's something. She is. Oh, man. Wow. Right. Wow. What a bad... And on that note. What a bad... bad time. Oh, it was bad. Such a bad time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the... But... Oh, go for it, please. Bye. Oh, no, I was gonna say, the good news is... Yeah! It only goes up from here. Woo! Oh, <laughs> have man. Have a great week, everyone. Yes, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.